Negative audio, you say. Can't hear me? Poof poof? Hello? Check check? Nothing? How about, How about now? now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me?
Okay, okay. So, so this, this should, should be working, working now. Greg, Greg, can you can hear, me? hear me? Answer, Answer question. question. So this should be working now. Greg, can you hear me? Answer, Answer question. question. There. Okay, that should right, right, fix that me. echo issue. There. Okay, that should fix that echo issue. Okay, there we go, there we go. Echo should be fixed. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. That's this, The technical shit's Greg's job, not mine. Anyway, so here's where we stand right now. We have a little update in the middle works here. Um, as most of you have been following us along know, uh, we've been kind of on a hiatus. Uh, Casey had to take an indefinite hiatus because he's got some health issues he needs to straighten out. And in the meantime, um, Greg and I are working behind the scenes trying to relaunch the show. Uh, for those of you, uh, yeah, preview is on, fuck you. For those of you who uh, have seen our shows, you've probably met Kevin before. Kevin's going to probably be joining us on the uh, show full time. Uh, we're working on maybe picking up a couple other hosts as well. So it should be a good time. Uh, the biggest hurdle we had to face was Greg found a house with a studio space. Before we didn't have any place to do this, so we were trying to come up with some sort of way that we could all do it remotely and things like that, which was not working out so well. So that was the biggest thing. Uh, Greg's getting everything set up with, with the computers, get everything back to normal again. And uh, then the second hurdle we have to deal with is my work schedule right now is kind of um, tentative. So I will eventually get a regular work schedule, and when I do, we'll be able to start going live again. In the meantime, we were talking about maybe just recording podcast episodes for a while, put them out. Um, we're still working on the particulars, but I wanted you all to know that we're not dead. We're still back. We're doing things. And uh, the podcast will be coming back. Just uh, stay tuned. Keep an eye on our socials. And in the meantime, I wanted to talk about this game. It is called Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Now, growing up, I was a huge, huge fan of uh, the Castlevania games. <laughs> Craig's at work. You should probably do actual work. Yeah, you probably should. Anyway, I was a huge fan of the Castlevania games, but as you know, Konami has been kind of like fucking off and not making shit anymore. They're too focused on making pachinko machines instead of actually making games. So, uh... Pretty much the main man behind uh, all of the Castlevania games from uh, Symphony of the Night onward, uh, Koji Igarasha, has left Konami and he's created his own. Uh... Yep, bots already. He created his own studio and he's basically creating his own clone of the Castlevania experience called Bloodstained. Well, he did a Kickstarter. And the new game is very cool looking. It's called Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. It's not out yet, but it is going to be kind of a Symphony of the Night, Metroidvania style game. And it's kind of like 2.5D. It looks really cool, and if you're a fan of Symphony of the Night, you'll probably fucking love this game. But I'm a little more old school, and I'm excited about this one, and I've been playing the shit out of it. It's called Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. It was a stretch goal originally. Uh, for reaching certain Kickstarter level. What it is is an 8-bit style game and it's fabulous. It's fantastic. Later on, Greg. So I'm going to get this game started here. I've been playing the shit out of it. Uh, you'll see a bunch of save files. We're going to start with a fresh one here. Now, uh, one thing I really love now, this Nightmare in Ultimate mode, I only have this because I have been playing the shit out of it and I unlocked these, but we're going to start on the normal mode. And uh, here's the part I love. You can either do a veteran run or a casual run. Now, I am old school. I love the veteran stuff, but for the purposes of this video so I don't look like a jackass, we're going to do a casual run. 
uh, what it is, lives are unlimited and you don't get knocked back when you get hit. Like in the veteran, you know how in Castlevania you used to like, if you get hit by something that knocks you back, you don't have that with the casual. It actually makes it so much less frustrating. So this game is fucking awesome. There once was a man who, was, who had been given the moon's curse by demons. That man was Zangetsu. Wrapped in crimson garb with eyes like fire, he relentlessly pursued the demons who cursed him. As he journeyed from one pit of darkness to another, he would stop at nothing until he struck down every last demon in his path. One night he sensed the looming presence of a great demon. He swore to eradicate all demons, no matter how much of a threat they posed. Bathed in moonlight, he cried out as he drew his sword, which consumed the darkness from within his, its wretched steel. On that night, either the demons or the moon itself would feel the wrath of his blade. Alright, so here we go. Here's Zengetsu. Uh, the music in this is just badass. I love the music in this game. Oh wow, that is that is running slow. Jesus Christ. Man, I got too much going on. Hang on, guys. Well, I hope that helped. I can't see anybody's chat anymore. Uh, that helped a little bit. Man. Why does X-Split have to be such a bitch? It's not supposed to run this slow. It runs actually really great, but uh, this thing is just eating up my fucking shit. Alright, I'll tell you what, Facebook, if any of you guys are watching on Facebook, if you want to catch the live stream of the game, you heard my update, but if you want to catch the live stream of the game, go to our YouTube channel, or Periscope, or our Twitch. I'm going to have to kill Facebook here, I think. Hopefully that helped. It's probably just freaking XSplit. XSplit run is a damn resource hog. Oh, this is bullshit. Try to see if I can do anything to ease this up a little bit. Jesus. Maybe I can just minimize it? I don't know. Maybe that'll take away some of the system resources. I have no idea. I can't fucking do anything around here, you know what? Problem is I need a better video card. All right, so it's, like I said, this is running slow. It's not entirely unplayable, but it's a little rough. So it's got a really great pixel art style. It's definitely in the Castlevania vein of things. Um, there's different ways to play. It's kind of following along the lines of uh, the Castlevania 3 kind of mold. You get different characters you can play. Uh, as you can see, there's there's uh, these lanterns instead of uh, candles. You get lanterns, and hearts actually give you health, which makes more sense than hearts being weapon fuel. The weapon fuel now is that blue shit.
so. Sengetsu gets a sword, and there, now I have, for my alternate weapon, I have this little scroll thing that you can shoot down. Uh, that is a hidden passageway that I cannot go through because different characters have different abilities to take different shortcuts. I can't take that shortcut. Why is it the beginning, you might wonder? Well, because in the other modes, you're actually able to play back through with uh, the other characters. So. These little spooky skeleton guys tell you the quickest path. Now I have... It's kind of like the whip from Castlevania, except for it only goes in one direction. And that's up. I said, I, I can't see anybody's chat, so I'm sorry if any of you guys are trying to talk to me. I tried to ease up on some of the system resources. I might be able to bring the chat back. I don't think it's really making much of a difference at this point. It's XSplit itself that's sucking all my system resources. There, if you're on Twitch or uh, YouTube, I'll be able to see your chat. If you're on Periscope, for some reason the Periscope chat doesn't work anymore with Restream. I don't know why. Very Castlevania. There's no wall chicken, but you get wall hearts. <laughs> this game is so much fun. It really does scratch my uh, nostalgia edge. Look, there's those classic uh, left and right enemies from Castlevania. They just look a little different. Man, I really hate how slow this is going. And the funny part is, it's not even a system resource intensive game. It's just a fucking restream. Or, uh, not restream, uh, XSplit. We paid for XSplit, so I like using it, and it allows us to stream to Facebook, but, uh, damn. It's such a resource hog. OBS runs a lot better. If any of you guys are ever trying to get into a streaming game, XSplit has a lot of nice features, but I'll tell you what, OBS is where it's at when it comes to performance. Okay, so we're going to face our first boss here. Which ought to be a little easier with this slow down play style we got going on. See, I don't know if this... I, I'm almost positive that this wouldn't really be possible. Uh, on an actual NES. Obviously the 16.9 resolution. Uh, you guys probably can't see the very corners of the screen because of my little overlay that I have. Shit. Fireball. Just like a lot of Nintendo games, you know, once you figure out the pattern, the bosses aren't all that hard. And like I said, I'm playing on casual mode too. The bosses are a little harder on uh, veteran. There we go. Almost all the bosses, after you, when you hear that sound, that's when you beat them, but they almost all have like some sort of last shot they do. 
have to watch out for that. I almost look at this first level as a preview. Because, well, you're about to see why. Now, this is where the different gameplay ways come into play. Now, you get a character here. You get different characters you can choose from. You can either go talk to them and let them go with your journey. You can ignore them and walk right by them, or you can kill them. And if you kill them, Zen gets who gets different abilities. If you, if you talk to them, they'll come with you, and then you get to use that character. Thank you for saving me. Was it the demon's power you used to steal, steal that beast? You, you're a shard binder. That power can summon forth demons at will. I cannot allow that. Yeah. Okay, so a shard binder means that they have little bits of crystal in their skin. It's all part of their part of the lore of this new game. Okay, so Miriam is joining us. Now Miriam's actually the main character of the, the new game that's coming out, the Okay, so it tells you it's nice to have allies. This tells you what Miriam can do, which is a whip, a high jump, and a slide. And this is where it really improves over Castlevania 3. You don't have to go through this lengthy change thing, you just use the left and right buttons to switch at will. It's awesome. And now you can see why this is when the game really gets started. We have a whip. You can't go in every direction. It's not like you can't do that little flaily thing that you can do in some of the later Castlevania games, but you got a whip, it's got great range. Miriam can jump further. Fuck off. You too. Uh, this game uses like doors like checkpoints. So anytime you go through a door, you know if you die, you're gonna start back here. So the quickest path, I could go down there, but I can use her. If I had Zengetsu, I wouldn't be able to make that jump. So they all have different strengths and weaknesses. Miriam can make that jump with a problem. She also has a slide that can go under like little things, you know, like that open wall we got in the last level. She'd have been able to slide through that. These are some fucking frogs and they're annoying as shit if they start jumping at you. This level really looks like Contra to me. Damn it, now I got that stupid knife I didn't want. Little skeleton guys always tell you where to go. I guess that stupid knife has its purpose. Miriam's definitely like the closest to playing like a Belmont type of character. She's got uh, the whip. She's got the range. Uh, a lot of her secondary weapons are very Castlevania-ish. Uh, one thing of note with this game I should mention is once you commit to a jump, you're on that trajectory. Like, you cannot change in midair. So you have to be careful. You know, you need to make sure you know where you're going with your jumps.
Fuck you. I don't know whether the game is speeding up any or whether I'm just getting used to the slowdown. I can't tell at this point. I think I'm just getting used to it being slowed down. Like I said uh, earlier, if you're just tuning in, the game is not this slow normally. It's just I'm running uh, X Split and it's just so system resource intensive. I think I'm definitely going to take my uh, streaming setup back to OBS. It just runs better. I love this weapon. You know, and the the blood splatters on this on the graphics is such a nice touch. It's definitely, it's very, uh, it would never be okay for an actual Nintendo game. Now, I should have used Engetsu because I would have gotten that little thingy, that little scroll that enables me to go down in the corner, or throw down in the diagonal, but I didn't. I don't actually. After I get Miriam, I don't really use Engetsu for shit. Miriam's got this here axe. It it's slow, but it deals huge damage. I basically only switch to Engetsu when I'm dying. So you can avoid the purple ones if you don't want a different weapon, if you're happy with what you have. I like to use this uh, big ass axe on these bosses, it makes short work of them. It almost makes them too easy. Probably gonna have to switch this and get to here pretty soon because I'm getting getting pretty beat up. I could avoid this shit and not get hit so easy, but that uh, that axe just takes their health away so fucking fast. You can just kind of brute force your way in. Uh, I think I'm just going to play a normal, like, nice guy run of this and, and recruit everybody. If for no other reason than you get to see them all. I'm not going to play this real long tonight, just because uh, it's frustrating me. Alright, so this is Alfred. He's an alchemist. He's kind of like uh, the Sifa character. I don't need to read that shit. I know what he does already. Alfred's like Sifa from uh, Castlevania 3. He's, you know... The, the wizardy kind of guy. Uh, he uses magic. He actually has a magic spell that you get out of green glowing lanterns. It's, it's almost a game breaker. It's uh, so ridiculously overpowered. Um, I don't like what... No, of course, I'm getting the same thing anyway. I was going to say, I don't really like what Zengetsu has right now, so I'll see what I can get for him. Damn, this is slowed down so bad. Yeah, next time I, I play, we'll play this uh, again. I will play with OBS instead. Next split.
Half my problem, I think, is I don't have a very good video card in this thing, even though it's my gaming computer. Mostly because I'm cheap. So this is Alfred, he's got a little... He's got magic he can use, which is really handy. You know what? I'll show you something cool about this. So you can use... That, and then you can switch characters and you still got it. That's uh, really cool, actually. See, that's an Alfred shortcut. It's specific to him because it's easy for him to get through that. Nope, I like what I have. Oh, that's the other thing you'll notice uh, if you switch to Alfred. Alfred's got a tiny little health bar, and look at this. That little staff's all he's got besides his magic. Yeah, well, you know what? Fuck you! I don't use old Alfred very often, but you know what? He's kind of a badass sometimes. Whatever. Something good up there, I'm sure, but I can't get to it. I don't have the right weapon for it. I love the fucking music and the graphics. The graphics is, is just amazing. You know, I always end up taking a different path. I don't think I've ever been this way on this level. There's lots of different ways to get through the level. This is, uh, this is really slowing me down here. Slowing my system down, this fucking wall thing. Oops. That was a poor decision. 
fuck you. Rat. Damn it. Now I lost her. For now. I've got Zangetsu. And I've got uh, Alpha. This is a cool power-up. It makes Sengetsu's hit stronger. Now, if I had Miriam, I could slide through there. You know what? I'm going to be cheap. It's cheap. I know it's cheap, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because uh, having unlimited continues, I can do that. Now, if you're playing in the veteran mode, you only have so many continues. It's not a great idea to do this, but... I'm playing casual because I'm a filthy fucking casual. There we go. See? Unlimited. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this until we get our last character. And then I think I'm going to put it away for the evening. Frankly, because I'm tired. I don't want to sit here and play this game all damn night. I don't work through a shift anymore, so I actually sleep at a semi-normal human time. Alright, last boss, er, third boss, last boss for the night. So what I didn't realize at first is I thought you had to hit the boss, but you actually don't. You can win entirely without ever hitting the boss because he's everything, including the coins. You can hit him too though if you so you are. I think that's the case. I don't know. I'm just going to hit him anyway. If you don't have Miriam, this guy's actually kind of hard. I was trying to do that. I was trying to put on his little fire thing, fire ring thing, but he doesn't have... 
I mean, it's not impossible to beat this guy without Miriam, but it really helps to have her. She has that better jump. And here's our last guy. His name is Jeebel. You know, because that's easy to say. Jeebel. Or as I like to call him, Alucard. Because he's pretty much straight up Alucard. You'll see. We'll, uh... I'll show you his powers and stuff here. Curse Shard Binder, you carry the power of New Earth Demon. Very perceptive of you. I require the demon's power to achieve my revenge. At this moment, our objectives align. Cooperation would be fruitful for us both. I'll let you continue breathing for now. So there's Jeevil. So let's check him out. So now we're Jeevil. As you can see, he has a bat thing. We'll go to the next level I'll show you here. Now I'm gonna quit here pretty pretty abruptly, but um And his power he can turn into a bat. Has a little attack he can do with it. I ran out of power. Uh, the really nice thing that uh, he comes in handy with is after you get him, any of those purple uh, lanterns you get to, always drop a magic potion, mana, whatever the hell you want to call it. So if you've got all your weapons the way you want them to with your other characters, you can always switch to Jeeble and uh, stock up on your magic points, your weapon points. Which definitely helps. This definitely has like, these eyeball things are like those fucking Medusa heads that you always see in uh, Castlevania that go in that damn arc pattern. I hate that shit. See like, here's with Jeebel. He, Always does that potion. Check this out. See, this is a, a shortcut made specifically for him. Alright, that's enough for tonight. You can always go back to hit Curse of the Moon, too. Like, if you made a decision you didn't like, you can always restart further back. So, anyway, that was uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, which I think is a really badass game. It really is awesome. Uh, they did a really great job with it. It absolutely captures that Castlevania spirit, and um, I really have tried to unlock every mode. I've been trying to play it as much as I can. I think I've unlocked like 75% of it. Uh, there's different like modes you can unlock. There's different stories. There's different endings you can get. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot like the old Nintendo games where you know if you didn't do things right, you got the bad ending. It's totally in the spirit of Castlevania, and uh, it's perfect for Halloween. Uh, it's only like uh, I think it was ten but it's ten bucks on Steam. Pick it up. It's it's really good and it helps support the development of. Uh, Ritual of the Night, which is also looking really good too. So next time we play, I'm gonna I'm gonna hook up OBS. I think it'll just be better for y'all. You'll be able to see it better. So see y'all till next time. And remember, the podcast is coming back. 
It's just a matter of when. All right, see y'all.